to Pano Planets. So we're here at Will Piva. Um, it's a bit windy, so you'll have to excuse the audio. Um, probably not the best location because we haven't got a great deal around, but the idea is just to show you how to do it. So, um, first off, we need to use a tripod. Um, one thing that's really important as a starting point is to get your, your tripod level. So fortunately my tripod's got a built-in level. So my first step is to make sure that this is level. Which it is. So that's important. So that when we spin the camera around, it's remaining on a on a level level axis the whole time. Um, I'm shooting um, really wide because we we're really close to the, this tin mine and we want to distort the, the the perspective. So I'm at 15 mil, um, and I'm getting a lot. We're getting a tin mine and quite a bit of the sky in as well. So we're going to be um, as we're on a tripod, we're in manual focus, and we have got image stabilisation off, so we're not confusing the camera. Uh, we're going to be shooting in manual. Um, going to be shooting. We've got good bright conditions, so um, I'm at f f11. I'm on a tripod as well, so we don't need to to worry about hand holding. Um, ISO 100 because we want good quality image quality, um, and then it's a case of taking the shot. So one of the things to bear in mind is we're shooting straight into the sun here. If we take the exposure for the sun, um, obviously it's going to be a silhouette here. By the time we pan around, um, we're going to have shots that are too dark. So what we need to work out first and foremost is an exposure that's, that's going to give us a, a exposure all the way around. What we don't want is the camera to change the exposure. We want a consistent exposure all the way around. So here, what my camera is telling me is f11. It's um, one three hundred and twentieth of a second. If I spin around, right around, we've got a full, a full, st full stop difference. Uh, so one sixtieth of a second. So what I shall do is probably go somewhere in the middle. So uh, next thing to do is I'm going to manually focus. And to make that easier, I'm going to use, I'll use live view. Uh, we've manually focused. Um, I'm just focusing on the actual tin mine itself. Uh, I don't need to worry too much about depth of field. That's, that's the main uh point of interest if you like so um that's going to be my focus point um, another thing to add is i'm shooting in raw so although we are going to get a difference um in exposure as we go around the shot we will have a little bit of you know we can recover some shadows and pull some highlights back so as i say we're going to have frames that are going to be maybe slightly too bright probably that way but when we get around here they're going to be slightly too dark um, because we have got that one stop difference from here to there. So um, I'm, now I'm going to take the shots. Um, I will use a remote so that I'm, I'm not needing to touch the camera, um, but I will leave my tripod loose and like this. So that's so I can uh, just spin it around. Um, I am going to use live view. Um, so the reason for using live view is I can take take a shot um, I'm gonna aim for like a 30 sort of 50 percent overlap so when I take one shot by using live view I know how far I need to move the camera before I take the next shot okay so let's go for it so let's take the first one and there's just a case of taking a series of shots gradually moving the camera making sure that I've got the overlap each time and 
going all the way around. I'm probably overlapping more than I need to, um, but I'll make Photoshop's life easier when it does come to, to stitching them together. The other problem we might have today is, because it is a little bit windy, is the cloud is moving. So that is gonna make it a bit more, more challenging when it comes to stitching it together. There's a few people around as well, so we don't wanna get them in the shop. there and I will almost go back to where I was so I've got a full wrap around and that's it so if we look on we'll look on the back of the camera quickly and you'll be able to see that we've gone around in a full loop that's it. Okay, so we've uh, changed position. We're going to try a different composition while we're here, whilst the weather's nice. One thing I did forget to mention is um, we've leveled the tripod. But it's also important to level the camera. So fortunately on this camera, um, I can do it in camera. The camera's got a built-in level, which is this line here. So not far off it's pretty good um, so important to uh, to make sure your camera is level not just the tripod um, and the other thing you might want to consider is uh, shadows so uh, long shadows obviously going to be a problem I've made sure that's out of frame but in the grand scheme of things you probably won't see it in the final image anyway but it's just something to, to take in, into consideration